South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley is entering her second year in a role that has taken her from the state she calls home and holds close to her heart to a position that she can use to change the world. As the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, she has a unique view of what's happening globally. In my exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Ambassador Haley on Friday, I talked with her about the refugee crises, nuclear weapons worries, and which countries are the most difficult to deal with. I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Nikolai, for the briefing. Nikki Haley's life has transformed since leaving the governor's seat in South Carolina one year ago. She's now tackling world issues as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. How has your experience as governor impacted your experience here at the U.N.? You realize you use all those same tools that I used as governor I'm now trying to use here at the U.N. Is it easier or harder to deal with these representatives from other countries compared to the lawmakers in South Carolina? I think that at times they can be similar. There were times when legislators did feel like the Russians. But I can tell you that, um, you know, it's challenging. It is. Because every country obviously has their own interests in mind. And our goal is to turn around and make sure their interests align with ours. When Ambassador Haley took on this role, she made sure she would have the access she needed to do the job justice. She says she asked President Donald Trump to make the ambassadorship a cabinet level position. And it's been a balancing act, catering to the needs of the Trump administration and those of other countries. A lot of countries don't know what he's going to do. So that's made them be more cautious about how they deal with us in a good way, that they don't just assume we're always going to be there. And I use it. You know, I say, I can't always promise you what the president's going to do. And so we, through that, you negotiate to get to where you want to go. Has there been a country that's been more difficult to deal with than others? You know, I think obviously from a threat standpoint, North Korea is the one. Or looking at Iran, those are difficult. Uh, the Russians continue to be difficult. Um, they try and stop everything that we start. They um, are very critical of the United States, but we continue to work with them. Just a couple of weeks ago, the U.N. Secretary General said the world is on red alert with new dangers emerging and global anxieties over nuclear weapons at an all-time high since the Cold War. To have a country that has nuclear weapons is one thing. To have an irresponsible country with nuclear weapons, that's the threat. And when those weapons are sold and they're used by those that don't want, um, that don't mean right in the world, that don't want to um, focus on good things, they want to focus on bad things, it's a problem. And right now we need to be very focused on the nuclear threat. The fact that North Korea is our number one issue right now is because you have an irresponsible leader continuing to build up his nuclear arsenal. Ambassador Haley has not let up the pressure on Iran either, calling the country a sleeping giant in our interview. Right now, even though there's the nuclear deal, they are still testing ballistic missiles, they are still supporting terrorism, they're still selling their arms, and all of those are violations. And we just gave them a whole lot of money to do it, and that's terrible. And so we've got to roll that back and get it in line so that we're holding them accountable. Now, just today, Ambassador Haley brought the Security Council to D.C. to see firsthand evidence from the Department of Defense of Iran's illegal weapons program. Her Facebook post said, these violations cannot continue.